and welcome back. And today what I want to do is talk to you guys about QNAP NAS. More precisely, what I want to talk about is the best ways to back up your files and your folders. Now, today we're going to be using 10GBE more than anything else, to be perfectly honest, because the amount of volume of files we're going for today, as well as you know, comparing different speeds, is going to be important. I want to show you guys today the difference in terms of realistic speed in a real-world environment the difference between storing on a single hard drive, storing on a RAID 5 array across 14TB um, hard drives, and finally with SSDs only. Of course the SSDs are going to be the fastest by a country mile, but after that I'm then going to show you SSD cache and give you a real understanding of the difference in speed between these, these formats and volumes. Don't get me wrong, SSDs on their own are hugely expensive, but a combination of hard drives and SSD cache will give you noticeable improvements. Now I'll be using the a 977 rack mount here, the Ryzen based CPU, because we want to make sure we've got plenty of power to remove that variable. We're also using that i7 uh, laptop we got here, and that again is going into a Thunderbolt to 10GB adapter, and that's copper based 10G base T running into this NAS. But without further ado, let's make our way to the screen. Okay, so here we are on the desktop interface. We've got these three RAIDs out here. Once again, we have just a single hard drive on its own, so no RAID. We then have three 14TB enterprise level hard drives, so the Seagate Iron Warps. And finally, we have got four SSDs and a RAID 0 environment. So, what we're going to use, and again, just to make this as straightforward as possible, because a number of you home users out there don't really use QNAP's own proprietary software. When we do our test throughout, what we're going to utilize is mapped network drives. In real terms, what that means is that we are drag and dropping within Windows from our local system onto the NAS, but using Windows protocol. So there's the 4TB drive on its own. We're gonna leave that open there. And we're gonna make our way into my archive there. And we're just gonna grab a big pile of files. Let's see what the capacity here is. And we got 47 gig. So if we use all of them, why not? Let's go for that one at the top. It's not 49.3 gig. Let's use these folders here. And we are quite simply just going to drag these over. Once again, this is utilizing um, the laptop we used in all the other tests. And we are utilizing 10 GBE. So we've got 10 GBE running via a Thunderbolt adapter on this laptop. And without further ado, let's paste these files and hopefully get the clock started now. Right, so by my calculations, that took a little over 5 minutes and 35 seconds to transfer those same files over to that single hard drive on the NAS. Hopefully on screen right now, we've got the averages on screen, and I've made a note on there, so hopefully in the post-edit, we can work out some averages on that. But now we're going to switch over and do exactly the same transfer, this time onto those raided hard drives, those three 14 TB drives in a RAID 5 environment. So we're going to backpedal, we're going to go into the RAID 5, as you can see the folder isn't there. Once again, they're still available, we're going to go for a direct, actually no, just to be on the safe side, let's recopy, I know cache shouldn't be a problem, put it in there, and now we're going to paste those same files over. I'll get ready with the clock, 3, 2, 1, go! immediately you've already seen that speed increase and remember this is the difference between a one hard drive and three hard drives yes they're enterprise level hard drives at 7200 rpm compared with 5400 rpm but what you get here is a great big speed boost between traditional um, 10 gbe hard drive access and rated 10 gbe access and already we're seeing enormous speed increases there i mean in the previous test, the highest number I got there was 180 meg per second, and obviously it differed, and the average is going to be wildly different to that. But right now, we're seeing 370, 380, I think we even pipped 400 vaguely at one point there. Now remember, if this wasn't a RAID 5 and it was a RAID 0, we would be getting even better speeds than this. But what I'm going to do is fast forward to the end of the test.
and we're done there as well. And that took, according to my calculations, just a pip over 2 minutes and 40 seconds. An enormous increase there, despite the fact that both of the first two tests were using mechanical hard drives. And this, again, is one of the great benefits of RAID. And once again, I will be working out some stuff there that I hope you can see on screen with regards to some of those averages. But now we're going to do the next test, which is using now the SSDs. So we'll move away from these two and we'll set up that SSD environment on screen and map that network drive. Now we've already done it there. So what we can do is look at the available network drives and we need to find the SSD RAID 0. We're going to map that network drive. Okay, so the next part, we're going to transfer the same files onto that RAID 0 array. Now do bear in mind that the files that we're sending over are still relatively large and you won't get true SSD speeds. We're looking at getting something similar to what we got from those RAID drives. Now, first and foremost, if we go into something like AJA Test Manager before we start, we can see this is the speed that we're getting from those SSDs. Again, these are small bit files going across as quickly as possible. If we look down here, we can look at the RAID 5 configuration. And again, it does bring that speed down, but this is in an optimal environment, something that we're not really doing. We're going for a case by case. And finally, we can look at, well, if we were doing the test on those hard drives. Now the hard drive speed, again, no, we're looking at the wrong one. I do apologize. Let's go back to the right one. So again, the speeds come right down there for that single hard drive. But remember, this is an optimal environment we're discussing here. Now, the test we're doing at the moment, uh, what we're doing, just Windows the data drops. So that is not the sort of speed we're getting, but it's just in case you needed a benchmark there. But now we're going to transfer the files back to the SSDs in the RAID 0, and we'll get ready with the timer on the side. 3, 2, 1, go. So there's that massive spike there at the beginning, but the speed will still be greater than that of the raided hard drives. But what I would go as far as to say is to bear in mind that they're not going to go obsessively crazy afterwards. We are going to hit certain benchmarks of the SATA um, file format. And remember, that has a lot to do with the fact that my internal hard drive is still uploading those files. So what we're seeing right now is the max speed of my internal hard drive. <coughs> and if I, not my internal hard drive, my SSD even, sorry, sore throat there, but I'm not going to edit it out because of the speed test. But right now what we're seeing is my system being bottlenecked by my own SSD, but it still shows that in this user case environment, the RAID is still giving you as much speed as you would hope sending those files over. Now, when this is over, what I'm gonna be doing is another video to do with SSD caching. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to take advantage of the system internally, because right now, the bottlenecks externally are what limiting this overall. But remember, if you are going to utilize a pure SSD environment and use the device in itself, you have to, you're gonna to have to make sure to keep an eye on the bottlenecks of the devices you upload from. Because if you're writing to the device, something like this will occur. But it does still show you that if you are using standard desktop PCs or devices in your environment, regardless of the fact if they run on a single SSD and you're running 10 GBE, running a RAID 5 across multiple hard drives can often be as good as using current hard uh, using SSD only NAS arrangements. So in the next video we will move forward onto that SSD cache test. But right now we're, we're closing in on the last 10% and remember the last transfer took 2 minutes and 40 seconds and we're just crossing over the 2 minute mark now. So SSDs have been quicker but marginally and now we're hitting those horrible files at the end that brought the speed down so much last time but as things close in on the last few percent we can definitely see and i'll get ready on the timer we are clocked in at come on we're clocked in at two minutes 24 so the only difference there of around 16 seconds. But again, this has been comparing those three uploads from a standard desktop system. Do stay tuned to the next video where I'm gonna talk about SSD caching and I will see you next time.